Hello, and welcome to our channel, a nexus for the inquisitive and perpetually curious. Here, you can explore a wide range of topics from our everyday life and beyond. Dive in, and you'll discover a universe of knowledge that is continuously evolving, spanning from science to arts, nature to culture, history to technology, and everything in between. Welcome to our Cosmic Exploration Series. In this episode, we delve into the captivating celestial phenomena of lunar eclipses. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates. We're thrilled to embark on this journey with you and look forward to your company throughout. A lunar eclipse occurs when the Earth positions itself between the Sun and the Moon, casting its shadow onto the Moon. This celestial event is a consequence of the Moon's orbit around the Earth, which in turn orbits the Sun. This orbital synchrony leads to moments of precise alignment of the Sun, Earth, and Moon. In this configuration, the Earth blocks the Sun's light, causing the Moon to traverse through the Earth's shadow, resulting in a lunar eclipse. This phenomenon can only transpire during a full Moon when the Moon is near a lunar node, which influences the nature and duration of the eclipse. The diagram effectively illustrates the Earth's shadow, comprising two distinct parts, the dark umbral shadow, and the dimmer penumbral shadow. The umbra, the core of the shadow, is where the Earth entirely blocks direct sunlight. Conversely, the penumbra, the outer part of the shadow, is where sunlight is only partially obstructed. It's important to note that the sizes, orbits, and distances of the Sun, Moon, and Earth are not depicted to scale. The diagram shown here outlines the Moon's path through these shadow components. The Moon initially enters the penumbra, experiencing a partial obstruction of sunlight. As it progresses, it reaches the dark umbra, where it is entirely deprived of direct sunlight. After this phase, it exits the umbral shadow, re-enters the penumbral region, and finally emerges from the Earth's shadows. This journey provides a captivating insight into the celestial dynamics of lunar eclipses. The Moon's interaction with the Earth's shadows results in various types of lunar eclipses, including penumbral, partial, and total. Each type presents a unique spectacle in the night sky. A penumbral lunar eclipse occurs when the Moon traverses through the Earth's penumbra, the dimmer, outer portion of its shadow. During this event, the Moon remains untouched by the Earth's umbra. A total penumbral lunar eclipse, a relatively rare phenomenon, happens when the Moon is entirely enveloped by the Earth's penumbra. A partial lunar eclipse unfolds when only a portion of the Moon penetrates the Earth's umbra. During this event, one part of the Moon is immersed in the Earth's umbra, while the other part remains in the Earth's penumbra. During a total lunar eclipse, the Moon is fully immersed in the Earth's umbra, the darkest part of its shadow. Despite being in the umbra, the Moon is still visible because some sunlight is refracted, or bent, into the umbral shadow cone by the Earth's atmosphere. This refracted light illuminates the Moon, allowing us to see it even during a total eclipse. When the Earth fully obscures the Moon during a greatest eclipse, the lunar surface can appear reddish due to Rayleigh scattering of blue light, the same process that gives sunrises and sunsets their orange glow. This happens because the Earth blocks direct sunlight, leaving only the refracted, atmosphere-filtered light to illuminate the Moon. To enhance our understanding of the Moon's trajectory through Earth's shadow regions, it's crucial to examine the timing of lunar eclipses. This timing is determined by its contacts, the specific moments when the Moon intersects with Earth's shadow regions, namely the dark umbra and dimmer penumbra. These contact points, P1, U1, U2, mid, U3, U4, and P4, are illustrated in the diagram. Let's review each one. Contact point, P1, or, the first contact, this marks the start of the penumbral eclipse when the Moon's outer edge first touches Earth's dimmer penumbral shadow. Contact point U1, or, the second contact, this signifies the onset of the partial eclipse as the Moon's outer edge begins to interact with Earth's darker umbral shadow. Contact point U2, or, the third contact, this marks the commencement of the total eclipse when the entire Moon is within Earth's umbra. 
Mid-contact point, or, the greatest eclipse, this is the peak of the total eclipse when the moon is closest to the center of Earth's umbra. During the total eclipse, the moon appears reddish due to the bending of some sunlight toward the moon by Earth's atmosphere. Contact point, U3, or, the fourth contact, this marks the conclusion of the total eclipse as the moon's outer edge starts to exit Earth's umbra. Contact point, U4, or, the fifth contact, this signifies the end of the partial eclipse when Earth's umbra completely leaves the moon's surface. Contact point, P4, or, the sixth contact, this is the final stage of the eclipse, marking the end of the penumbral phase when Earth's penumbra no longer touches the moon. These stages provide a comprehensive view of the fascinating process of a lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipses are believed to have a variety of effects. They are commonly thought to drain energy, leading to feelings of lethargy or fatigue. Moreover, they may disrupt sleep cycles and hormonal balances, potentially causing irritability, mood swings, and an overall sense of imbalance. However, these effects are subjective and open to debate. Discussing eclipses at a higher level, confusion often arises between a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. Despite both involving interactions between the Sun, Earth, and the Moon, they are distinct phenomena. The primary difference between a lunar and solar eclipse lies in the positioning of the Sun, the Moon, and the Earth, as well as the duration of the event. As depicted in the figure, a solar eclipse occurs when the Moon obstructs the Sun's light, casting its shadow on Earth. In contrast, during a lunar eclipse, the Earth is positioned between the Sun and the Moon. For more insights into this fascinating topic, we invite you to watch our video on solar eclipses on our channel. Ancient civilizations developed methods to decode the cosmos and predict cosmic events. These systems, reflecting our ancestors' advanced astronomical knowledge, were founded on careful observation and documentation of celestial events, enabling them to predict phenomena, like eclipses. The Panchangam, a Hindu calendar, is one such system, akin to those of the Mesopotamians and Greeks, among others. Despite varied approaches, they shared a common goal, understanding and predicting cosmic patterns, highlighting the universal human endeavor to comprehend the universe's rhythms. Thank you for watching. We invite you to explore our channel, where you'll find a wealth of content from our Cosmic Exploration series. But, that's not all. Venture beyond the ordinary and explore an array of topics, ranging from daily life to intriguing subjects like science, arts, nature, history, technology, and more. If you enjoyed our content, please support us by sharing, subscribing, ringing the bell, and giving us a thumbs up. We appreciate your support.